let me take a step back and then come to your question. Uh, we, we are uh, in a situation whereby with the growth of GDP, aviation and hospitality will grow probably in the range of double the GDP growth, which in the situation of India would be 15 plus percent for the years ahead, uh, probably even more in some specific places. That in itself would require an enormous influx of, of, of people actually working here. Some other parts of the world are struggling by finding adequate staff numbers. I think India, from that sense, with its young population, is having actually a lot of people wanting to work and, and, and um, entering that labor market. But it's not about only about the number of people, it's also about to what extent are they prepared and are they ready to do. And given the enormous similarity between hospitality and aviation, I think the pool of, of people actually coming from that site is, is, is a fantastic addition to, to the, the education systems which focus on aviation only. And maybe the last thing there, aviation has a lot of different aspects. I mean, the, the beauty of aviation, I found the beauty of aviation is people are working, you know, you have pure technicians. That's a very different role than our teams working at customer service. That's a very different role than the folks working at IT. So you have all these different aspects and, and against that backdrop, I think for us as an aviation and surely the size of Indigo, we need to work uh, with institutes uh, like this one because that will help us to broaden the pool of talent will help us also to give back feedback and to have a, a really collaboration, a deep collaboration, not a, not a supplier type of relation, but a deep collaboration when it comes to what would be the needs, how can we prepare best, what could be the best way of, of making sure that, that we have a workforce ready for the future. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, IATA, it's not ICAO, but IATA. IATA is, uh, I'll be, I'm in the Board of Governors of IATA and I have the, the honor of, of chairing that, that board uh, next year. But I think it's a good opportunity for India because that will be able, I mean, that's, it's an industry body and representing the markets. They are not so much specific airlines. So, uh, but it's an industry body which is also uh, working and collaborating with governments to give feedback on. on uh, policies and procedures. With the fact that India is today one of the fastest growing markets in the world, um, especially when you relate it to the size, you know, there could be smaller markets with a percentage higher, uh, is that, that the focus is, is very much so on, on India and we had the, the latest IATA conference was taking place in Istanbul uh, early June and there was an incredible amount of attention for what's going on in India and look at the numbers of, 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 of aviation growth in India. And where still some markets are struggling to recover from COVID, India is well above uh, pre-COVID levels already. And again, if you take just the numbers for Indigo itself, our highest number prior to COVID was 75 million. The financial year passed, we did 86 million and we expect this year to end up in the range of 100 million. So that just just shows a 25% higher than the situation prior to COVID. And so, so that is where India is taking that position on, on the global stage. And with more and more foreign carriers coming here and more and more India connected to, to other parts of the world, India's representation in policy making in global practices is, is an increasingly important factor as well. I'm working in the industry now, in, indeed, a little over 30 years, and it has been a, a wonderful journey. And, and within that long journey, many, many flights and, and journeys. Um, it's, it's actually a very intriguing question. Um, is there one hospitality experience to that? I, I, I guess um, it's a very different setting depending on, on the, the design, if you wish, of the, the travel and the trip you're making. And I've had numerous trips where speed and efficiency was the most important. And then I prefer to have a, a loyalty program. So I'm quickly check in. They know I need a non-smoking room close to the elevator, lowest possible floor. And, and 
that's that's a type of travel. You know, you come in late. You don't want to have all, any any rush. All the info is there. That's done. There's also also been travels to new places where you have a bit more time and actually you appreciate to have the hotel as as a part actually of the cultural experience and therefore I, I usually take a mixture between sort of the international change which have a standardized service mm. all across the globe which I think is a fantastic thing but also at times to have a very domestic if you wish uh, experience and, and here in India are probably some of the best hotels in the world uh, I'm not sure if it would be appropriate to name, to, to name some of them, but, but I, I guess we all know what we're speaking about. There's some, some beautiful hotels and some beautiful experiences uh, where, you know, it's really an experience, but that's a very different mindset. And again, arriving in Mumbai late in the evening, just quick business, it's a very different mindset than going to Udaipur for a day and a half or doing some meetings. So it's, for me, Taking it back to the airline, we should be able to address not only different customer needs, we should be able even to address that a specific customer is having specific needs or different needs at different points in times. So you cannot say Peter is always like this mm -hmm. or always like that, or Peter, we should put Peter in that box or in that. that mm -hmm. Today he could be, but tomorrow he may maybe in that box. And that I think that's the 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 if you, if we can crack that nut, and therefore our cabin crew is playing an incredible important role because they have to feel is Peter in for a conversation, yeah, or should we leave him alone, giving him his opma, and that's it. That's the that's the essence. And maybe that I think from back to your hotel question. The absolute hotels have the ability for people who have immediately you know, okay, Peter's wish for today is that, not that, but that. And tomorrow may be different, but today this is what he needs. And if you're able to, to tune that mm. and have the product flexibility to tune and have the staff to make that, that, that setting, I think that's a wonderful, powerful thing. Well, follow your dreams, actually, and uh, uh, you know, follow your passion. And, and, and the, the job itself is, is, is a consequence of putting your best foot forward in that passion. Uh, and I mean, I could not imagine 30 years ago when I started in aviation to be today in India uh, being privileged and proud and, and humbled really to to lead the India's largest airline with a fantastic team of people um, and so so my suggestion to to your students would be follow follow your passion follow your 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 dreams and you know and one dream is not better than the other one it's just a different one and, and if people are able to follow their dreams and then go for the jobs and there's a sort of, you come into a setting whereby you follow your dream, you get enthusiastic, you put your efforts in it, you put your best foot forward, it starts to pay off, you're being recognized and, and you come into a sort of, of flow and with that following your passion, I think that's the most important. Well, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> spending quite a bit of, of time, yes, also on the weekend, but uh, you know, actually, to and there's where working and not working are blending. Uh, here in India itself, and again, being, I visited India numerous times um, prior to joining one year ago in my KLM days in life. Uh, India was a relevant market and I had the pleasure of visiting. But visiting or living is a different thing. And, uh, you know, experience holy. Um, recently, I was flying back uh, from uh, Sri Lanka and I decided rather than flying back nonstop, I make a stop in Trichy. Uh, so I spent a, a Saturday in Trichy and, and just wandering around, uh, meeting the teams, but also wandering around for a couple of hours to the city. That's, uh, that's Peter not working, that's Peter 
soaking up, uh, if you wish, uh, the wonderful diversity, colors, food, smell, people of, of India. And that, that I guess if, if that's a weekend that's there or taking my family to different places in India. Uh, I mean, my son is here now. I went to my own stump yesterday. That's just, just to get the flavor about what's going on. And, and sometimes a bit off the beaten track, sometimes more the beaten track. Uh, so that's what, what Peter is doing. If he's not, if he's not at the office, let me phrase it like that. Uh -huh.